Hi, this is Squat, and in this video, I'm going to tell you about muscle cell signaling. So muscle cells come from uh, somites. In the early development process, you have ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Ectoderm makes the central nervous system and skins, and this is a neural tube that forms in the early developmental process. And around the neural tube, you have mesoderm-derived cells, and these cells are somites. These somites can migrate to different parts of this developing embryo and uh, start to fuse. So these are somites starting to fuse, and eventually the fused somites can make up the muscle fibers. And this is why muscle fibers have a lot of a nucleus around the center and muscle fibers are very long. It's because many somite cells fuse together and make a muscle fiber. Okay, and in this developmental process, the cell that becomes muscle are mesenchymal stem cells. The mesenchymal stem cells can also become other types of cells like fat, cartilage, and bone, and of course, muscles. In each of this differentiation, there will be different set of transcription factors used to make its uh, final specialized cell. For muscle making, one of the transcription factors used is called MyoD. So MyoD can get to the nucleus and increase the making of a protein mRNAs like actin and uh, myosin. And as you know, the actins and myosins make up these cytoskeletal things that muscles use. Okay, now let's talk about the skeletal muscle cell making. The stem cell that's going to make skeletal muscle cells called satellite cell. And in general, this process goes like this. Stem cell copies itself and this progenitor cell that's copied becomes the final specialized cell. In this case, the stem cell is the satellite cell and the skeletal muscle cell is this final differentiated cell. And in general, wind, ligand from the environment and the stem cell niche helps driving this stem cell division and the progenitor cell differentiation. And as the final product accumulates, in each of these final differentiated cells secretes TGF-beta. So increased amount of TGF-beta works in the system to slow down the making of the differentiated cells. So wind drives the forward process and uh, TGF-beta slows down this forward process. And in muscle cell making, wind and uh, other ligands can stimulate satellite cell to divide and differentiate to become the muscle cells. And the TGF-beta equivalent of a muscle system is called the myostatin. Myostatin slows down this muscle making process. And this is why during exercise, when you break your muscle fibers by working hard, muscle cell mass decrease, right? Because cells are broken and the myostatin level goes down with it. As myostatin level goes down, this inhibition decreases, so you let the satellite cells to build more muscle cells. And also for people suffering uh, muscle loss, for example, a disease called uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and cachexia. Cachexia is muscle waste. People going through chemotherapy can have cachexia. Also, people suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome also have uh, cachexia. For these people, their number of muscle cells are low and also the sizes of the muscle cells are small. One of the treatments to help these patients target using monoclonal antibody myostatin. And the logic is that these monoclonal antibodies will uh, eliminate myostatin from the system and maintain this muscle cell making by the satellite cells. By the way, the increase in the number of a muscle cell is called uh, hyperplasia. An increase in the size of a muscle cell is called hypertrophy. Usually 
uh, hyperplasia takes place before birth and uh, hypertrophy takes place after birth. Some animals, including people, have genomic change that decreases the amount of a, a functional myostatin. So positive, positive means uh, two alleles, one from mom and one from dad, have normal amount of uh, myostatin function, but individuals with uh, one negative, one positive, have a less myostatin activity, and those with a double negative have uh, uh, almost no myostatin activity. And animal breeders usually tries to look for animals with this genotype because these animals have less myostatin and uh, more muscle making, so they are bigger, stronger. Um, they don't look for this double negative because these animals are a bit hard to deal with, have their own problems, so it looks like heterozygous uh, myostatin genotype, loss of function, is good for um, athletic performance. In some human populations, myostatin genomic change is selected for, but its effect is not just a muscle increase, sometimes muscle decrease. So we still don't know what happens exactly. And if we look at people who live above 100 years old, the likelihood of finding this myostatin loss of function, heterozygous or homozygous, is two to three times more likely. So it looks like myostatin uh, is doing something that is helping them to live long. Finally, let's talk about steroids. Steroids are hormones, and hormones are secreted by special cells, and they travel throughout the body. And they're powerful because they can go through a cell and even go through its nuclear membrane to change the cell's gene expression. It has a wide range of uh, targets. And one of the targets is this muscle cell making process. And it looks like steroids can help maintain the process. But we have to be careful when we use it because it has other targets as well, including your heart and your prostate and all these things. So its cost and benefit has to be carefully weighted when uh, trying to prescribe steroid therapy. And finally, the myostatin's way of working on cells is just like that of TGF-beta. It uses the TGF-beta signaling. So here is a receiving cell, and here is a myostatin receptor. Myostatin can bind to the receptor, and the receptor activates a protein called SMAT, and SMAT goes and changes the gene expression of this cell, resulting in cell making more muscle cells. And this is a common signaling cascade in the TGF-beta signaling.